The NFL draft just four days away. We've got the Bengals beat writer from the Cincinnati Inquirer, Paul Diener Jr. with us. Butch Hobson is here as well from Bengals.com. Guys, thanks so much for your time tonight. Hey, first couple of months on the beat, Paul, you thought, hey, I'm going to start my beat job in the offseason. There's no offseason. There is no offseason. <laughs> we go and we go and we go. And just when you think it's over, then it's, oh, we got to talk for a week about when the schedule is going to get released. That's so there's, right. there's never a calm, calm day for us. All right, let's take care of a couple of housekeeping uh, issues first before we get into the draft and dive in to see what the Bengals might do with their first round selection and beyond. Uh, Paul, what are you hearing about uh, Geno Atkins, his recovery from knee surgery during the offseason? Well, all signs are he's going to do pretty well. I mean, it, from what we heard, Every time we've talked to somebody, they've said he's on pace, everything sounds okay. You talk to Gino, well, Gino doesn't say much. He yeah. just plays well. Uh, he says he's fine. We'll take his word for it. We'll learn more once they start to get on the field and you see that once he can get on and do a little bit more work. But for now, all signs are he's on pace to be back at training camp. But we're still a long way from that. Butch, I, I hear you're hearing good things about Leon Hall's recovery from the ACL. Yeah, well, he's done this or before. Or the Achilles, yeah, rather. Yeah, the, the Achilles. He's done this before, unfortunately. So, uh, we, uh, in yeah. the last time he did this, if it hadn't been for Peyton Manning's neck, he might have been the comeback player of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, he had that good of a year. Uh, you know, you can't, you, you know, because each injury is different, each guy is different, each Achilles is different. So, you can't really come out and say, well, he's going to do what he did in 2012. But it looks like he's going to be Leon. He's going to be uh, there on the first snap at training camp at the end of July. And the good news is it was the opposite Achilles, so it's not like he's trying to rehab the same thing recurring over and over again. Let's talk a little bit about the NFL draft. We'll start at the top of the draft with the Houston Texans. They, of course, have the first pick. Are they set to take Jadeveon Clowney, Paul, or could it be someone else? And if they do take Clowney, where does that leave Johnny Manziel? Well, I mean, this is, it, to me, I think it's Clowney. Mm -hmm. I think because the depth at quarterback, and they need a quarterback, okay? They do. I mean, they don't have one. It was their issue last year when Matt Schaub tanked and, and went on his pick six bench. And yeah, in this league, you got to have one. It, but I don't, you don't get the sense that people are buying in that the future is so clear cut with any one of those guys, Bortles, Manziel, whoever you're talking about. Clowney is so good. I mean, he's such a rare prospect, and the, the concept of putting him with J.J. Watt I think is going to be hard for them to pass up, particularly when you look at Tier 2 quarterbacks. You have a pick at the top of the, of the second round, there's going to be a lot of good quarterbacks there. If they found one that they believe that they like or that can come in and be pretty good, I, I think for them it's, it's probably a no-brainer to try to hit the two-run homer. Butch, what do you think? Uh, you know, there is no Andrew Luck where you have that quarterback who you just know. For 15 years, you just know he's the guy. What do you do if you're Houston? Well, I mean, I think you got to go with the. I mean, uh, I think Paul hit it right at the head. This is a second tier draft for quarterbacks. Right. This is the 2011. This is this is the Bengals waiting to get the best player, the best receiver, maybe the best player on the board at number four. Then getting your quarterback. Mm -hmm. You've got so many good players at key positions. You've got uh, you've got Clowney. You've got Lil Mack as the outside pass rusher. Um, you get uh, Sammy Watkins. Who may be another AJ or Julio Jones? I mean, these guys are much better and, and than the than the quarterbacks, and, and get the tackles in Matthews and Lawan and uh, Robinson. So you get mm -hmm. so many players that are better than the, than the quarterbacks. Is that uh, I could see them? I could see one or two of them really falling. Paul, it's also a draft that is very heavy uh, in terms of the secondary, and the consensus seems to be that when the Bengals come around. They might go for a defensive backfield uh, help anyway. Um, are you seeing it that way, it, or could they go for the offensive line, where also they lost Anthony Collins, lost Kyle Cook. They need some help there as well. Well, I think the interesting thing is they don't have to do anything. Let's say the Bengals didn't come out of this draft with any cornerback. Would they be in trouble next year? They'd still be okay. They'd yeah. still be okay. I, assuming Leon Hall's okay. Terrence Newman, people keep talking about his age. All he does is play great. Mm -hmm. Pac-Man Jones ha had a great year. Drake Kirkpatrick is still a first, former first-round pick, and he's on his way up. You know, So they wouldn't be in a bad way. So I think it's more open than a lot of people portray it is. Nationally, people get so involved with team needs. Oh, well, Bengals got to get a corner. So everyone keeps plotting them a corner. I think it's far more open than that. That said... Dark was Denner, Justin Gilbert. These two guys are, are, are the real deal, yeah. and if they're there, I think it's probably the right fit. You know, you're also talking about a team that's built to win now, Butch. Cornerback is one of those positions, kind of like quarterback, receiver. Not easy to learn that first year. Would you go elsewhere, even if the offensive linemen are all gone, the real good ones? You know, they're getting banged for not having a good offseason. And I, and I think uh, people forget when they sign a Carlos Dunlap, when they sign a Geno Atkins, that's their free agent signing. Right. You know, 
they've uh, they've got their you know they want an impact player. Well, they signed up their best inside pass rush, rusher, and they signed up their best outside pass rusher. Unfortunately, they had to let go of a very good defensive end, Michael Johnson, go. But I mean, that's you know you can't keep everybody. So I think that's the way they're looking at this draft is just what Paul said. There's not an immediate need. So I mean, uh, you're you're looking at a at a at a point now where. The old Bengals would reach for a corner. My God, right. our depth chart. Look at the age. They would go down and they would get a Jason Verrett. And well, I don't know. Verrett's a slot corner. Right? He's a nice player, but is he worth a first-round pick? You yeah. know, the Bengals are not in that Kiwan Ratliff, Mark Roman. My God, we got to have a corner. You know, so they can they can sit there and if it's the, a wide receiver, take the guy with the grade. That's why they've drafted so well the last five years. When they, when the, when the dust clears, who's the highest graded guy? They are pretty strong across the board, the Bengals, pretty deep still as well, so they could afford to just take the best player available. Butch Hobson from Bengals.com, Paul Diener Jr. from The Inquirer. Thanks so much, guys. We appreciate it. Thanks, bro.